everyone. I'm Ann Roberts, a mystery and romance writer with Bella Books, coming to you from Eugene, Oregon, home of the Fighting Ducks. And um, I'll just gonna say right now, if it looks like I'm wearing lipstick, I'm not. Uh, that hasn't happened since 1992. But unfortunately, I'm not in great lighting. I am thrilled to be a part of Bella's new Author's Corner, an opportunity for authors to connect with readers virtually. Today, I'll be reading from my upcoming mystery, Dying on the Vine, the eighth installment in the Ari Adams mystery series. And I promise you there's a lot more pages than this. Ari Adams is a real estate agent in Phoenix, and trouble just seems to find her. In this series, there are a lot of funny moments, lighthearted scenes, and some would call them cozy mysteries. And in the scene I'll share today, Ari and her best friend Jane to fly to Oregon's Willamette Valley. Jane is getting married, and she and Ari are scoping out the wedding venue, which is a vineyard owned by Jane's childhood friend, Mina Summer. Now, although Jane is getting married, she is a serial flirt, and she's going to have a little fun with the TSA agent. So this is Dying on the Vine. The long security line wended left and right as the weary passengers shuffled forward, a few gulping final sips of coffee before the stoic TSA agent confiscated their cups. Ari Adams sighed as she and her best friend, Jane Frank, joined the line. I really wish you'd sign up for pre-check, Ari said. As often as you fly to Cali to see Rory, I think you'd want to skip this part. Nah, Jane replied, and miss the chance to be frisked? Are you serious? We're in this line at 3.30 in the morning because you want to get felt up by a cop? Jane just smiled. Don't you think that's a little ridiculous since we're headed to the location of your wedding? Hey, Rory and I aren't married yet. Ari looked aghast. If you're suggesting, Jane held up a hand and gave her stuffed carry-on bag a push forward. I'm not suggesting anything. I'm totally committed to Rory. My days of lewd remarks to women in uniform and committing sex acts in nearby restrooms because of said uniforms are over. Jane had easily convinced Rory that they should marry at the vineyard and this trip would only confirm what was already decided. Rory had wisely chosen to stay away, giving Jane and Mina reminiscing time. Ari was happy to accompany Jane and fulfill her maid of duty honor, meet Mina, and also Mina's wife, Cleo. And of course, Sample, the winery's award-winning Pinot Noir, cleverly named Phoenix. They finally reached the head of the TSA line. Ari eyed the one female officer, a trim young thing with short jet black hair smoothed back in a ducktail. Most likely family. The young agent wanted a woman who'd set off the metal detector. Ari shook her head. Jane lived for this. They each grabbed two bins and performed the required FAA ballet that allowed them into the airport's inner sanctum. Ari assumed the hands joined overhead position and exited the scanner without incident. She gathered their things and moved outside the immediate security area waiting for what would undoubtedly be a show starring Jane and the poor, unsuspecting TSA agent. The only thing missing was the popcorn. Jane, wearing a crisp, tailored white shirt that clung tightly to her large chest, stepped into the scanner and locked her arms above her head. She closed her eyes, shook her blonde mane left and right, thrust her chin to the sky and froze in place like an actress in a bondage film. When the young female motioned for her to exit and step to the side, Jane's eyes grew wide. Is there a problem, officer? She leaned forward to read the badge. Uh, Cassidy? Cassidy cleared her throat and stood ramrod straight. Yes, ma'am. I need to check here, here, and here. Her blue-gloved hand motioned toward Jane's left and right hip, as well as her abundant cleavage. Do your duty, Officer Cassidy. I don't mind. Jane grinned, and young Officer Cassidy turned completely red. 
She patted Jane's hips so lightly that Ari wasn't sure she'd actually made contact. It's okay, officer, Jane coaxed. I won't break. Cassidy shifted from one foot to the other, unsure of how to approach the issue with the cleavage. Ma'am, are you wearing a bra with a wire? No. Have you had any surgeries or augmentations? Honey, everything up here is grade A, 100% real. Want to see? No, no, she replied. I believe you. She stared at Jane's breasts. Are you wearing a necklace? Of course, Jane cried dramatically. I forgot. I'm so sorry. She undid the next button of her shirt, pulling apart the fabric so the agent got a clear view of her maroon bra. She withdrew a funky medallion from between her breasts. Might this be the problem? Cassidy cleared her throat. <clears> throat> uh-huh. Jane reached behind her neck, undid the clasp, and freed the necklace. She held it out to the agent, who stood there mutely. Her jaw dropped. Why don't you keep this, Jane suggested. She took the agent's hand and placed the medallion in her upturned palm. Officer Cassidy whispered a slight, Thank you. As Jane swaggered away and took her carry-on from Ari, she threw the young agent one final look and said, Do you think she'll remember me? Ari rolled her eyes. For a long time. Okay, so that's the scene. Dying on the Vine and all 20 of my books are available for pre-sale at bellabooks.com. And I'd also love for you to check out my website, annroberts.net. Thanks for tuning in. Stay healthy. Stay good. Stay safe and be good to each other.